October the 24, 2023. Guys, there's a lot of information coming out of Israel and uh, the Hamas area there in Gaza. And we're getting some somewhat shady information, and we're getting some that seems more credible. Now, they've been holding back. They're saying they're holding back on the full-scale invasion of Gaza. I'm talking about the IDF because of the hostage situation and pressure from outside sources. They had a meeting yesterday in at the United Nations, and the president there, uh, Guterres, I think is his name, he told the Israeli ambassador to the U.N., that you do not have the right for unlimited killing. In other words, that you cannot have a collective punishment. Hamas attack, not all the citizens, and not all the kids, none of the kids, they didn't attack Israel. So you can't just go in here carte blanche and kill everybody. What is happening now, even as we're seeing that there's some delay in the uh, Gaza movement, that overnight, guys, they had bombing runs. 700 Palestinians were killed, a lot of them children. It was the largest one-night loss or 24-hour period loss probably since, well, I know since this conflict began, but going back a long time. So we're getting reports are holding back, then they go in and uh, with multiple bombing runs, take out 700 people. So Guterres is calling at the U.N., or to stop it, let international aid come in there. Don't Again, he called it collective punishment. Don't do that. Now, France has said basically the same thing. They flew into Israel, and Macron and Netanyahu, they shook hands and all and talked about it. And France said that we're with you, Israel. But again, they refer to this collective punishment. You can't do that. You just don't have the right to go in and completely wipe out uh, civilians. Now, on Israel's side, they're saying there will not be any Hamas left if there's any Gaza, as it's known now on the maps, left because they just don't want to have to put up with this stuff. And I'm not going to take sides here, but the situation really got fired up, guys, as you know, in the late 40s when... Uh, Basically, the British set up this return to this land. And so it's been going back and forth since then. The Palestinians say it's their land. The Israelis say it's their God-given land. So we have that conflict. But again, they are saying they're holding back. And it may be, as far as a lot of troop movement, but it's bombing the border there where they can bring in humanitarian aid uh, at the on the Egyptian side, that's continuing. They're not letting people out or in very much. You had 20-something trucks rolling in out of hundreds that are waiting. There's no food. There's no fuel. The hospitals are running out of generator fuel there in Gaza. There's no water, things like that, no power. And it will take a long time to get power back on in any of these areas if you look at the destruction. So you've got the world including the U.S., including Blinken at the United Nations, saying that um, we are behind Israel, but you, do, you cannot go in there and do the collective punishment deal either. So on one hand, the U.S. has come in, got ships in the Mediterranean, in the Red Sea, they got troops in Israel saying we're here to help you, and they're still putting that same limitation on there. And I can see this, guys. Any body with a heart can see that at least get some aid in there or give them time open up the border so they can leave if you're going to destroy that area don't do it with the kids in there and there were a lot of them i saw videos this morning of a lot of injured kids because of the overnight bombing so we got a couple of different scenarios here one they're waiting uh, to possibly get more troops in from the u.s and more munitions let the ships get in place a little better that's in the mediterranean and again the red sea and let all the things get in place before they go full force in there but because of what happened last night they may be past that point so now's the time to really watch what egypt and jordan syria are going to do Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia. They're all saying the same thing. 
We understand the situation, but you do not have the right to go in there and massacre the civilians. And, you know, I'm a humanitarian. I believe that that's true. You don't have that right. You fight. If you want to go in there and you want to get them out, don't bomb the civilians. Strap on a pair and go in man to man and do it. There's a problem with that, and that may be the other side of this equation that we're not hearing a whole lot about. Maybe they have attempted to go in like that, and maybe it didn't work out too good. According to a U.S. general, that's exactly, or retired general, it's exactly what happened. But what we're looking at here is now there's videos that a lot of equipment that went to Ukraine that you and I paid for hit the black market and it ended up in Hamas's arms. And you can uh, read this article. I'll link to it. It shows the videos of these shoulder launch rockets that will take out tanks or, you know, anything that it hits basically will take out. But a lot of that, a lot of other weapons and munitions that were sold or given to Ukraine are now back in the hands of Hezbollah and Hamas. Now, it seems like a lot of the world understands what's going on with this weaponry. We're not getting much information here in the MSM, mainstream media, but Turkish media is saying that Hamas is fighting Israel with American weapons that were given to Ukraine. Turkish online media uh, published information claiming seven days ago that Hamas, in its conflict with Israel, is using American weapons previously delivered by the U.S. to Ukraine says Republican Senator Marjorie Taylor Greene, known for her criticism of Biden's policy of supporting Ukraine, wrote on her social media page that Hamas may be receiving American weapons from Ukraine. Now, when we see this black market thing and this rotation going on, you just wonder who the big guys are. You, you know what I mean? It says Green called on Washington and Jerusalem to track the serial numbers of the M4 rifles. In addition, some Arabic channels on Telegram regularly publish videos in which Palestinian fighters openly express their gratitude to Kiev, which is Ukraine, for the sale of the weapons. So it, if according to that, not only are the big guys getting the big kickback, but it looks like Z-Man there in Ukraine is also part of the deal. What a, it's like a boat, it has, it's a hole that where your money goes, so same as this war situation. According to experts, in addition to M4s, Ukraine may have sold Hamas Stinger man pads and many others. There's a video here you can look at. The video doesn't say exactly where it's coming from. It looks like it's inside some type of big warehouse, concrete floor, with a lot of this munition spread out there. In addition, it says Israeli army found Palestinians in possession of man pads with the insignia of a Ukrainian unit. Now, there is information coming from the Washington Post, and you can take that pretty much with a grain of salt because it's not the Washington Post reporting. You know who I'm talking about. But they're also laying off multiple people, I think 400 the last time. So I think that the Post will, if it doesn't go completely bankrupt, will be completely AI-generated. But what the Post is saying is, that several experts who have expressed the opinion that Hamas is preparing a deadly surprise for the Israeli Defense Forces in the event of the launch of the ground phase of Operation Iron Swords. But let me say this, there's information, guys, that they may have started it and then got their butt kicked because of this weaponry and advanced training. They had to come back in as well as a large group of special forces from you know where continues it says we can talk about powerful anti-tank weapons precision missiles and drones it is likely that while the idf is entering the gaza strip hamas will attack the rear with new rockets plus you've got hezbollah to the north now these new rockets guys you can look at the images in the videos here you'll see that uh, where they came from it says hamas may be trying to lure israeli troops into its territory and then launch a surprise attack on targets far from the front lines using advanced systems larger rockets we've seen that happen the israeli defense forces command said it is aware of this possibility but stressed that the country has the necessary defense systems now 
yesterday took a course and sat down with uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor, who's retired, who laid out a disturbing scenario in which the U.S. could quickly be pulled into a direct conflict with Iran, Russia, and China over Israel's anticipated response to the October 7th Hamas attack. He's very concerned that all of this is being put together to bring about a World War III nuclear conflict. Also, he's alleging U.S. Special Forces went into Gaza and were shot to pieces, took heavy losses from what he understands. And that could very well be part of this holdup. I mean, they, again, he said they were shot to pieces, so it may be back up in punt time and get more forces in on the ground. But guys, it's, uh, it's a sad situation for civilians on both sides. Israel took heavy losses in the beginning. Now you've got over like 5,000-plus deaths on the Gazan side, 700 last night. And out of that 5,000-plus, I think there's 2,500 uh, children that were killed. Now, you never know exactly the numbers or exactly who's telling the truth because that's one of the first casualties of war is truth and then communications. But... It looks like, guys, that we are definitely moving forward, and it's, a, again, a back-up-and-punt situation on this ground attack that they're talking about. We're going to have to wait and see, but all the nations now have been to the U.N. Guterres came in and condemned Israel over the fact that you can't um, come in here wholesale slaughter on civilians, and uh, Israel now is calling for his removal from the United Nations. And it looks like that everything's kind of getting shaken up. There's plans, I know, to go forward with this new world war to hide many things, the economic collapse of most of the nations on the planet. But uh, their plans are not always going to work out for them, and it looks like they're getting a lot of backup and punt situations on the entire world deal right now. Russia and China, very powerful. They've become buddies now. Russia, Iran are friends. And because of that, Hezbollah has a very, very powerful army, and I think that Israel has a lot of second thoughts of this second war coming in from the northern sections here. But, guys, we're watching this. Things are changing quickly. had not been a lot of news out because I think they wanted to shut down what Colonel McGregor's talking about here for that information getting out very much. And uh, they don't want to lose face. Let's say it like that. But guys, we're watching it. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.